E.F. Hutton talks. People listen. All right, E.F. Hutton. I like to signal how old I am because I really feel like my age is passing off as everybody is kind of fading into existence and the younger crowd don't know what the heck I talk about when I make some of my analogies. E.F. Hutton was a huge investment firm and it was this big commercial. And it basically was that if E.F. Hutton was talking, they were so good that everybody had to listen because, you know, they were the best of the best. Now, my man Tehran, he's my E.F. Hutton. And I've got the worst timing in the world in some regards. It's like... You know, five Polish guys trying to uh, fix a clock on the water and they're all blind. That's usually how my timing goes with this thing here. Yesterday, I decided to take off and do my deadlifts. And because, you know, I'm old, that's like a, a, you know, it's a day right there getting sucked into it. And then I saw two great comments uh, on my live from uh, Bo and Brandon. You can see here. Hey, Tehran's doing a thing with Baldy. I'm like, oh, I was so excited, but there was no juice in the tank. So I'm a day late getting this stuff done. But I want to thank the comments. That's, that's, I love those comments. I would have missed it totally. I'd have been like, I probably wouldn't have caught it. I really don't do the, the social media stuff. I really don't pay attention to much stuff. I'm too busy studying other things. I try to, just not enough juice in the tank. But, you know, I make fun of my, uh, you know, sort of Tehran a little bit in the sense that uh, he's my man, you know, I, I kind of play with it like I'm a 16-year-old schoolgirl who struck on Tehran. And in some ways, it's, it's a fun, but in a lot of ways, it's not. Before I got sick, uh, for years, when I was doing Finns News and then doing this thing, I would watch the Dolphins game between 12 and 15 times, a lot of it slow motion and stopping and considering. It was like a lot. And watching a Dolphins game all those years was like a Greek tragedy because the offensive line was so bad, I knew that however good it looked, ultimately this all was going to end up in some kind of disastrous tragedy because without the offensive line in play, disaster was coming. Now, when we signed Tehran, and I understood who he was, but when I started watching the film, I did become a little bit of a skiddy, uh, a, a giddy schoolgirl because it, I knew that watching the tape was going to be fun in the sense there was possibility, there was hope. And I had mentioned Tehran is so critical. It's Tua and Tehran, not just Tua. It's Tua and Tehran. I got a little bit of guff for that, but I think people understood last year because Tehran is so good. He can block alone and all the help can flow down the line of scrimmage and you can do all sorts of stuff because Tehran's that good and he is that critical to this offense, to this offensive line and this team. And then I had mentioned last year, I got a little bit of guff for that in the San Fran game and the charge game. Tua sucks. I said, no, it's the run game. It's the run game. I mean, Tua made mistakes, but you cannot operate this offense the way it is without an effective run game. Without in some against the San Fran, no run game at all. So thankfully, I know I'm a yutz in some ways. And, and when I say things, it's just a guy, you know, on YouTube and saying this thing. And I get it. I shouldn't be taking his gospel. But Tehran and Baldy have affirmed both these points. And I think they are the guys that you should say, this is gospel. And it's going to back up the things I said. And, and the reason it's so critical, I need my Dolphins fans to understand. Because the way you evaluate determines how your social media presence and your voice is. And if it's targeted in good evaluation, it's going to help the Dolphins to do the right thing. When it's in the wrong direction, it could pull us in the wrong direction. And so this season coming up is going to have a lot of key and critical aspects. But Tehran's health, this offensive line, and the ability to run the football is going to be so critical. And I'm going to go over Tehran's uh, film with Baldy, about three minutes, not the whole thing. I'm going to let you see it, see what they say, and I'm going to break it down in parts and go over these critical aspects with some notes I have. I could do this for two hours, guys. Football is so complicated. It's so easy to say, oh, I understand. But most of the time, when you say that, it's not true. 
it, it just, you dig it and you come to an understanding and then you dig a little bit more and it, it just keeps, it's this rabbit hole that keeps going. But these are going to be absolutely critical parts to our season. And I do think that really the base of the success of this team is going to be based on Tehran's health, this offensive line, and the ability to run the football because that is going to create our pass game, time of possession to rest the defense, and points on the uh, uh, on the scoreboard. So I'm really excited. Uh, I won't go anymore. As a, without further ado, I'll get into it. But, of course, I've done a lot of further ado before this. Uh, so I want to give you a shout-out and a shout-out to Ace Per Head because without the two of you, Teron Talk. This show ain't happening. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so let's get into Tehran's talk, and you can hear what he says right here. So walk us through your mindset, knowing your left guard's not there, you got a big yep. hole inside, and you still got to protect the edge on the outside. All right, so this is an example of just like Peyton saying, hey, Tehran, my man Tehran, I'm sure he called him my man Tehran too. You got it. One, two guys, I don't care. You control that. We're bringing the help. Tehran's on an island. He's by himself. And then all the help goes there. And this is a massive asset. It's incalculable, really, guys, what, Tehran does for us and this offensive line. So let's keep going. This is one of the most challenging protections, but it can't be all O-line friendly if we are running the, the ball well and we're, we're getting this uh, attention from the, the secondary, the linebackers and the, and the safeties to step up. Okay, this is a point that dates back to my major thesis and contention 2021 in the Titans game where... We were facing the nickel all day in 12 personnel and the linebackers weren't, weren't biting. But then you carry it over into McDaniel's system and there is correlation, even though they're different systems, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But McDaniel's system is based off run uh, action, play action. And if you get those linebackers biting, it changes everything first part of the season everybody knew mcdaniel was the run coordinator and they really focused a lot more on the run game but as his book came out teams spent less and less time focusing on it bringing the nickel more not biting and dropping the clog that middle and that was a huge difference not only does it affect to his ability to complete the pass but it hinders the offensive lineman's ability to block because without that biting, then they're shooting. And if they're shooting, it makes it harder for those offensive linemen to handle the rush. Savvy? Let's keep going. It opens the lanes for, for Tua naturally to hit, the, hit those guys that's filling in behind. Uh, for me, this is one of the most challenging protections because everywhere else is, is a double team or you have eyes of, of one of the teammates. So it's a lot of space. I'm trying to sail, run sail. So it's a little more risky um, because it's not a pass pass set at all. I'm, I'm kind of run sailing, so I'm selling run. Hopefully that I can get his eyes and get my hands on and, and sustain the block for uh, three to four seconds. Now, this goes back to another thesis I have, and it's foundational football. The offense has to maintain the initiative. If they're doing run action and nobody's buying, he sells, but who's buying? Old Mega Death song, remember that? If they're trying to sell run action and nobody's buying on the line, in the secondary, it makes everything harder. Tehran, he's got to make it look like run action so he's not setting up the pass. He's, he's, he's making a move to show that it's a run. 
But if that guy is coming in as he knows his pass or believes his pass and he's pass rushing, then he's he loses the edge in a lot of ways. And even a guy like Tehran, that can make it harder. But what happens? You got guys like Eichenberg and uh, Little and Shell and whoever else out there. It makes it incredibly harder. But the run action is created by what they see on film in previous weeks. The DCs are like, oh man, these guys are serious about the run. We've got to believe in it. We got to call it to a run stopping defense. Then the players they see on film, well, I got to believe in this. So they take that step. They bite. They hesitate for a second to read before they make their move. All this is sold by tendencies and production. Because if you're not having a successful run game and you got this super, uh, you know, duo now trio of, you know, fast receivers, Okay, let them get their, you know, 3.1 yards, whatever, carry. I'm stopping a pass. So this is so critical for us to run the football. It's the foundation. Without it, it's going to be so hard in any situation, especially if it gets to be a non-conducive situation with bad weather or you're in a teacup moment where you got to get that third and short or second or whatever and short. So... The run game will be critical, and Tehran paints that picture, but it's going to get more dialed in. And the last thing you want to do on that play there, Tehran, is get beat inside. So you're always the protecting last thing I want to do. your inside with your post hand, right? Because that's the quickest route to the quarterback. For sure, for sure. Yeah, inside inside move will kill that play immediately because um, the, the left guard is, is voiding in that space, so it's a huge gap. Uh, Got to be very conscious with my inside hand and, and get my inside foot down. Not to get crossed. Over. Okay, so now he talks about, you know, if I get beat inside, the play's dead. So that inside hand, he's got to handle that situation if he's making that hard move. And so if you're not getting the action, it makes it so much more difficult. So you got to be wary. But now think about it this way. You're a DC. You think, well, you know what? I trust Tehran. Uh, to be able to handle that if my guy even shoots. So I got to respect everything to the left. Everything behind Tehran has to have a different level of respect, especially that end who's handling it, handling Tehran. But on the right side, you got Jackson. Jackson lacks power. Jackson lacks a lot, but certainly power. So some of the, your your playbook is literally cut in half. You can go and do certain plays to the left with Tehran, but with Jackson on the other side, can you expect that if something doesn't go exactly right, that you're not going to get an explosion inside and him get beat? And so this is the problem with Jackson on the right side, or whoever is that is substandard. If Jackson shows that he can handle that and he's able to deal with that inside move if things don't go exactly the way they want, then this offense will be dual threat. But right now, it is one-sided. And this is another thing you have to consider when you eval, whether it's McDaniel or Tua or the offensive line or whatever. It's very critical to understand this. Jackson can't even handle normal pass rush out to the outside, much less if he gets to stab outside and he has to come back in with the one hand to hold it and it's been voided because Hunt's not there. Savvy? All right, let's keep going. So you have an offense where there is a basically a play-action pass off every single run, Teron. And so selling the run is so important. Like on this next play right here where you're really selling run right here and you're trying to get the defense to move with you. I mean, this is this is just sell out to the right right here. Like everybody's yeah. blocking down, all right? And you're getting the defense to react there. You're sealing the edge right here. And you're, two is right here is just riding, gliding, and he's just waiting for Waddle to open up. No, for sure, for sure. That, like I, like I said, it goes back to the run game, right? We're running the right, we're, we're running uh, with production and, and we're hitting those five, six, seven yard gains. Defense has no other option but to respect them. And you see these linebackers stepping up. You see the, the safety stepping up. And, and Tua does a, an amazing job with his eyes and his footwork to take advantage of that. So uh, anytime we're running the ball well, we get those full sails going all in one direction. We want to make it look exactly like run. Every coaching point 
is sure. it's the run. The only thing you can do is go down the field. So the takeoff, the intent, the 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 hit, the contact is is all run. All right. So I let it run for a little bit. I'm gonna hit some points. P the play action is so critical. Selling the run is so critical. When you watch games this year and you see that play action and you see those linebackers either holding or even better, taking that step forward, it's a great eval moment to know things are going to go pretty good for the Dolphins offense. But, and you can see this with the Bills, I've mentioned it many, many times, when you see them drop and play action's happening and they're already dropping into coverage, this is not a good, this is probably going to be a hard day or a bad day. And I mentioned that last year and Teron just drives it in. He says, if you're getting those five, six, seven yard running plays, uh, it's forcing them to step up. And so if you're not getting the production or you're not running at all, you know, if somebody runs the ball eight times a game and you're in the third and fourth quarter and you see a play action, you, you, you know, your tendency is, you know what, I'm just going to drop. And so there is a whole host of ways that this can be created, but it must be created. Legitimate play action with a defense believing what you're selling. Now, two is selling with his eyes. This is critical. But if there ain't no play action, they ain't buying it. They're like, right. So it all comes back down to an effective run game. And at least, like Gailey did in 2020, a run game where you just run it enough that even if it's not super effective, they've got to, they've got to pay attention to it anyway. Because if you do run it enough, you could pop it if you don't pay attention to it. And so either through numeration, the number of uh, running plays, or effectiveness, or even better yet, both, this is how you get legitimate play action. And it must happen. Now, he said, the only thing you can't do is go down the field because if you go down the field, it's a penalty. We had a bunch of those. And you remember, some critical times. So this is going to be a big thing, too, for all offensive line to run because I don't know how they go down the field like that. So anyway, let's keep going. This is, this is when, it, when it all, all the, the music, like you said, the symphony, it all, it all plays together. So we get the expansion that we're looking for on the front side. But this play happens because of, of Connor Williams and Robert Hunt. Robert Hunt, an, an incredible young right guard. He's, he's one of the best right guards in the yep. game. Um, so for him to be able to to reach and cut off Cam Hayward, a future Hall of Famer, he makes the play. And that's the beauty of this offense. It allows the offensive line to be playmakers. Like, this is Rob Hunt's first down. And, you know, he should, he should get whatever, one carry for 12 yards. <laughs> it's Robert Hunt's first down. I love you, Teron. Yeah, I mean, really, I would, I, you know, there's a few guys that I really wanted to play with that have been suited up for the Dolphins, and you, you're one of them. You, you're so magnanimous. You point out that this is his play, and it's a truth. The offensive line generates yards before contact, and the majority of modern-day runners are created by the blocking. And this was. But you notice there was seven guys in the box, they weren't dropping into routes. They were buy buying this running attack. Now, another thing is, we saw a lot of nickels going against our fronts. And they were still able to contain our run game. We were never able to drive them out of the nickel. We weren't able to get them biting on the play action despite this. And it's so critical. But it comes down to the offensive line. And notice how he said, Hunt is one of the best young guards in the game. What do you think his cap number is going to be? That is 16, 17. And if he has a great season, 18, 19, or 20. I don't think it's going to be 20, but it could easily be 20, 15 to 19. And then you got uh, uh, Connor. He, him, Connor and Hunt work so well together. And a lot of the problems were because the tackle wasn't doing well enough and a, and a left guard. And then obviously Tehran wasn't there. Both these guys are critical to our future because the run game 
is how this team will thrive. Not run heavy, pass balance, effective run numeration, but you have to have a number of quality runs or you're going to be having a low offensive output. And you don't want that either. This is why I am saying Hunt and Connor are essential. Not separated with some yuts in the middle to break up what they got going there. The two of them working in tandem with Tehran on the outside. I don't care if he's average right guard because you can protect him in so many different ways. But that left guard spot is critical. You got to keep these two guys together. Hunt you know, towards the end, he had some problems, but this guy, I think, is going to have a massive, massive contract. So, Tehran, it was just such a pleasure to see him and Baldy. Baldy is just, he's like that old gladiator, you know, it's just like a romantic thing about the old warrior, and Baldy is just such a great guy. That's another guy I'd love to meet. Not as much as my man Tehran, but I would love to meet him. Now, the only way we're going to beat the best teams is to get legitimate run game, to get them out of the nickel, or at least get them in the nickel to step up, to allow Tua to use his eyes to move people, and to allow the offensive line to have a little bit easier job, and then to get those receivers behind the line, behind the uh, coverage. And I think this is going to be the absolute key, but it's all going to start with Tehran being healthy and being a guy who allows the protection to go down the line of scrimmage to help out the rest of the offensive line. If Tehran gets injured, it's going to be extraordinarily tough. And this is why if you see a game, I think it was San Fran with like little over there, there's no way to run this offense. It's almost impossible guys. Anyway, I went on for a long time. How long have I gone? Oh, 26 minutes. Anyway, um, I want to thank you for stopping by. I could keep going with this. Uh, I appreciate everything you guys do for coming by here. But, but please try to get a realistic evaluation on everything. Because if things go right, let's be happy. But if things don't go right, we need to cry to the rafters about what really is going wrong and what really needs to be fixed. Love seeing my man, Teron and Baldy. Thank you, uh, Bo and Brandon, for pointing out. Guys, catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins and go Tehran. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.